François Gauthier, still in France, maybe one of my last videos in France before I go back to India. Of course, I'd like to talk today about the Hardy uh, Modi event that was so successful in, uh, in Houston. And uh, praise, of course, the organizers and the crowd and the enthusiasm, the packed stadium. But at the same time, there are a few things I would like to point out. One is that Mr. Modi outshone Mr. Trump. Mr. Trump is a very wily businessman. Basically, Mr. Trump is just a businessman. He looks at how America can gain from everything. How can America can have the upper hand in business, in politics, etc. Now, Mr. Trump came because he thought that he would get the votes of the Indians, Americans, which are very sizable. Some people talk about four millions of them. Many of them have voted Democrat till now. So Mr. Trump saw that coming there, he'll use Mr. Modi to get the votes of the NRIs. But instead, Mr. Modi used Mr. Trump. And it showed that Mr. Modi is a very cunning, very intelligent, Chanakya type of politician. The second thing is that Although, you know, there was a, it was a huge success, nothing of substance was signed. There was no uh, economical or political treaty that could have been signed, making India a privileged economic partner as it was, or enhancing the defense against the Chinese of the uh, Chinese Sea and Indian Ocean, as well as Kashmir. Now, of course, most of the American newspapers talked about it, not because Mr. Modi was there, but because Mr. Trump was there. And they all, particularly the New York Times or Al Jazeera, talked about Kashmir. Again, you know, the heavy hand of the Indian government in Kashmir, the abrogation of the Article 370. And this is very sad. This is very sad because it shows that the Western media hasn't changed and doesn't see uh, uh, Mr. Modi's great success at all levels. The other thing is, uh, in my opinion, because I traveled many times in the United States to raise money for the Shivaji Maharaj Museum of Indian History, which I'm bu building in Pune, so I met a lot of Hindus, a lot of, lot of Hindu groups. Most of the Indian groups in the U.S. are fighting each other. There's absolutely no unity. Now, if they would accept to come under one umbrella, you know, keeping the autonomy but coming under one umbrella, they would have a tremendous political lobby with the Congress, with the Democrats, with the Republicans, regardless of who they vote for, you know, like the Jewish have in the United States. But they're so disunited. They fight each other, you know, they, they compete for a photo op with senators or congressmen. It's a very sad story of Hindus betraying each other, and it's very, very strong in the U.S., the other thing is, okay, great, you know, they came to the show and they showed their solidarity and the, most of the NRIs are behind Mr. Modi. But what is needed is not clapping. What is needed is that they invest back their money and their talents into India. You know, many of them are second, third, fourth generation Indians whose, you know, great grandfather or grandfather or fathers were educated, mostly free in India and came with the skills to the United States, they need to repair the debts towards India. You know? They need to, like the Chinese did, you know? the Chinese showed that they're proud. The American Chinese, you know, many of them reinvested their money back into China or went back to China. This is not happening. Again, I must emphasize that the greatest brain drain in the world is that of Indians, particularly Hindus, particularly towards the United States, and it's still going on. It needs to stop. India is a country of the future. India is where the future is. So the so NRI needs to look towards India to go back there. Even though it is more difficult to do business than in the US in the long run, it is the future. And the last thing I wanted to add is that it is unfortunate that Mr. Trump is going to meet Imran Khan just after meeting Mr. Modi. It shows that the old British you know, uh, policy of putting Pakistan in India on the same level to belittle India is still happening. 
the West still think that Pakistan is a moderate Islamic nation, you know, and they can use it to counter, you know, the, the Islamic fundamentalism, which is absolutely ridiculous, you know, because most of the fundamentalism, terrorism comes from Pakistan. Even 9-11, they all, they all went to Pakistan, though many of them were Saudis, they all went through Pakistan. So Pakistan, the biggest export of Pakistan is terrorism, not only towards Kashmir in India, but also towards the rest of the world. So there is something, there is some ignorance, you know, stupidity of the Americans and the US. And Mr. Trump, Mr. Obama was not better, Mr. Bush was not better. And this needs to stop. Namaste.